Optimism and positivity are a choice. Always choose optimism. Now, um, you may have the habit, as I used to, of uh, coming into a situation and uh, s trying to evaluate. Uh, you know, if I write a book in this genre of this many pages about this thing, is it going to sell? And I see people um, all the time, authors going into forums and whatnot, saying, uh, you know, if I do X, Y, and Z, is it going to sell? Um, and also asking, you know, are, for example, another question I see along these lines is people saying, well, if I make videos about uh, X, uh, are people going to like that? Is that popular right now? Another way I see this framed is when people thinking about what to major in in college, they, they say, is, is, is there a shortage, for example, is there a shortage of nurses right now? Uh, is uh, AI a hot thing to study right now? And all of this comes from a, a negativity, really. It comes from the idea that uh, what you have uh, what's in you, what you are passionate about is not possible. Maybe you haven't even explored what you are passionate about. And just the fact that you doubt, that you doubt so much that you have to ask other people, is this going to sell? Is this popular? Is this going to work? Means you are defaulting to negativity. So. Uh, and this takes another form, you know, think about an artist. Uh, think about a child, a child who's interested in art. You, nobody, no parent looking at that child, or very few, are going to look at that and say, hmm, art is a promising career for my child. Let me encourage that. Um, that's the rare parent who's going to do that. A lot of parents are going to look at that and they're going to say, you can't make money at art. Art doesn't pay, my son. You better study accounting. Uh, this is all negativity because it all assumes that there are limits. It all assumes that there is a fixed pie. It assumes that certain things are not possible. And this, this another way this takes form is when you get an idea you want to do something. Maybe you want to be an author. Uh, maybe you want to build a mailing list of a thousand people and you look at that and you say that's not possible. Maybe you post a few tweets, maybe you write a couple emails, maybe you write a few chapters and you sit there and you look at your work and the lack of results or the, the less the, the results that are less than what you expected and you say a part of you something inside you says this is just not possible this is not gonna work I tell you what I spent like 20 years telling myself that I couldn't write fiction I got really deep into fiction thanks to a friend of mine in college who just kinda sparked she just kinda sparked that whole interest for me art uh, art is in paintings uh, fiction, and I got so deep into uh, Kafka, Hemingway, Tolstoy, all that stuff. I just became fascinated with it. And I thought, I should write. And then I thought, no, I'm not a writer. I've never written anything. I've never even received proper instruction in how to write. I never took any writing classes. I don't think there were even any writing classes on uh, as an option in any school that I went to. I don't know, maybe at the University of Chicago, but I, I don't know, I just didn't see it. And I read novels, and I said, I can write this. And I read books on craft, so many. And I understood it backwards and forwards, but still, I spent, from the time I got interested in 1991 until 2013, 22 years, I spent all that time thinking, I can't do this. And I even had some initial attempts at starting to write. I outlined things, 
I wrote uh, poems, I wrote short stories, and some of it was actually decent. But still, I didn't believe I could do it. And what I was doing was I couldn't visualize. I couldn't visualize myself in, in achieving the goal, and so I defaulted to negativity. I defaulted to the belief that I couldn't do it. And therefore, I want to call your attention in the video to something I've realized, which is that positivity, optimism, believing you can do it, it's just a choice. You don't have to actually believe it in your soul when you start. In fact, when you feel like maybe you can do something, but there's a part of you that says, no, you can't. There's a part of you that says, I can't envision a world, a universe, whether that's possible. That's, that's a sign. You have to recognize that that's a sign that you have to keep going anyway. You, intellectually, you have to choose optimism. You have to choose positivity intellectually, even though you don't feel it in your soul. You don't feel it as an instinct, but you have to choose it anyway. You have to go through the motions. You have to take the next step. You have to keep going, especially when you look at your results and you say this sucks. This is not working. I suck. I'm no good. Because guess what? Uh, yes, people have talents. People have abilities. People seem to have innate passions and, and aptitudes for certain things. But you know what? 90% of it is not talent. 90% of it is the sweat equity that you put into something. 90% uh, of it is, is the persistence. Uh, Think and Grow Rich has, has a really good, uh, by uh, Napoleon Hill, has a really good chapter on persistence. It's persistence. And persistence is choosing positivity. It's choosing optimism. It's choosing to believe, to persist, to continue, even when deep down there's something in you saying, you can't do this. You're not good enough for this. You're not worthy. Look at all these other people with all their practice, with all their uh, honors, with all the nice words and, and, uh, and everything, the results, the results you don't have. That's when you have to say, well, that's nice, but I'm gonna freaking continue anyway because I choose optimism. And when you need an injection of optimism, when you're stuck, when you don't believe, but you need to continue anyway, Find someone who believes in you. Confess your struggle to someone. You'll find someone who believes in you. And believe in them when they believe in you. Choose optimism, always.